In Fallout 4, the sole survivor is able to shape the future of the Commonwealth by aligning themselves with one of the four factions located in the region. The Marty Brotherhood of Steel can be led to impose their near nightly fiefdom upon the people of Boston. The Shadowy Institute can seize power over the Commonwealth, continuing to pull the strings on the surface while pursuing their goal to redefine mankind through science. The Minutemen can be re-established as a semi-democratic form of governance, striving to give a voice and protection to the settlements of the wasteland. Although varying in a multitude of different ways, each of these factions espouse their own virtues and vices in their grand scheme for shaping the Commonwealth, except for the last and definitely least of the four joinable factions, the Railroad. As a short introduction, the Railroad is an underground movement dedicated to the liberation of synths, Created by the Institute, synthetic human beings are prized by their creators as the pinnacle of scientific discovery. Prized though they are, the Institute merely sees a synth as property, similar to a terminal or a misty handy robot. In staunch opposition, the Railroad was founded on the belief that although being machines, synths are owed the same rights and freedoms as human beings. Synths are an integral part of Fallout 4's story, they are literally the reason why Sean was ever stolen from the sole survivor. It obviously does make sense for a faction like the Railroad to exist within the game, as an organisation that is sympathetic to synth kind. My main issue with them though is that the execution of having them as one of the four main factions, on par with the literal army of the Brotherhood or the technological might of the Institute, is laughable. It isn't to say that there aren't any pros or even admirable qualities to the group, it's just more so the fact that they're a minor faction at best, which makes them the worst, in my opinion. Just Purely from a gameplay point of view, their entire questline essentially entails playing the Institute one. Sure, you get a few quests like Tradecraft or Boston After Dark where you actively pursue unique railroad activities. There's also a few railroad specific radiant quests that you can pursue. And with these, you get the slightly experienced challenging your foes in a sneaky game of cat and mouse and strive to save your companions and liberate synths, but after that, you legit just do the Institute questline. Sure, you're technically infiltrating them, but you practically are just doing the exact same stuff as you would if you were undertaking an actually sympathetic Institute playstyle. Until you do the Battle of Bunker Hill, after which you get to the final act of Fallout 4 and get to undertake what might be the dumbest quest in the game. The sole survivor, Deacon and Tinker Tom are tasked with boarding the Pridwin via stealth and destroying it from the inside. So, after defending against a Brotherhood assault against the Railroad HQ, the trio then head to Cambridge Police Station, the most heavily guard Brotherhood installation outside of the airport. The sole survivor mows down all the Brotherhood personnel on site and heads to the rooftop to steal the vertebird station there. While Tinker Tom prepares the bird to fly, another Brotherhood vertebird attacks and then is destroyed. The plucky trio then board the stolen vertebird with the intention to infiltrate the Pridwin with it. We're then treated to a bunch of witty dialogue of how Tinker Tom has no idea how to pilot the vertibird. The bird will spin in circles while Tom mentions he read the manual. He then immediately is able to fly it perfectly, all the way to the Bridwin, while Deacon bluffs his way past the Brotherhood flight control radio officers who ask for an update from the police station. They also note that their docking port is not open coming in for landing, to which Deacon responds that the docking port thingy is having issues. The flight controller then miraculously clears them to land. The sole survivor and Deacon, if prompted, then pop on Brotherhood disguises and place explosive charges around the Pridwin under cover before jumping back into the Vertibird and flying away while the Pridwin goes down in flames. The whole plan is idiotic. Putting aside gameplay limitations, it's difficult but not impossible, I guess, for the sole survivor to take out the Cambridge Police Station. But the entire plan to heist a Vertibird and sneak onto the Pridwin should never have happened. For one, the police station is loaded up with communication equipment. This is evidently how the flight officer knew something went down at the station and asked for a report. Maybe the troops on the ground didn't get a chance to report on who or what was attacking them, but the vertibird that came swooping in later that spotted the railroad hijacking the other one surely would have reported that in. They would have also then spotted said vertibird flying erratically to the Pridwin, not knowing any proper call signs or names for equipment, with the pilot not even in Brotherhood uniform. Once on the Pridwin, the speed checks the sole survivor then has to pass are definitely difficult but the answers are just straight up dumb. Proctor Quinlan asks where the technical reports are that were meant to be delivered. We can then reply that the scribe forgot to pack them, we'll bring them later, or that we weren't on the vertibird that he just saw us disembark. If passed, Quinlan just goes, oh okay, my mistake. The senior scribe maintaining the area will challenge you, stating that it's restricted. We can then say, 
I'm new to the ship, or this is a routine inspection, or that we are a superior officer. All equally dumb replies in their own way, but if pass, we move on. Once all the bombs are planted, somehow with no one noticing, we leave and unsuspiciously jump back on the same vertebrate that we just needed clearance for to land. The Bridwin then explodes, and the Brotherhood threat is all sorted. As stated earlier, my criticism from them is that their questline is essentially just the Institute's one, except you're doing it undercover, quotation mark. This is one of the few missions that is unique to the railroad, and encapsulates their core values of being sneaky and doing sneaky things. On paper it makes sense, and the first time I did it, I didn't mind. But it's on future replays where I'm aware of just how badly delivered and illogical the whole questline is. Now, aside from me whinging about them just purely from a gameplay point of view, ideologically, you could state that the Railroad is one of the few factions with the most noble of goals. This video isn't necessarily going to be about the Railroad stupid because they believe sins are sentient, or if we could consider sins to be sentient. However, you can't deny that their dedication to the liberation of a species, for lack of a better word, entirely separate from themselves, is undeniably noble. The issue is that as a main faction, this is fundamentally their only goal. With all the other factions, the Brotherhood, Institute, or even Minutemen, you're deciding the fate of the Commonwealth with the back faction ruling it, essentially as their own. With the Railroad, you're doing nothing of the sort. Sure, you eliminate the Brotherhood and the Institute, which would absolutely have an effect on the future of the Commonwealth itself, but this isn't done for any other reason than the liberation and protection of since. The Railroad ending is essentially the Yes Men ending of Fallout 4, the wild card, which may lead to more stability or chaos to the region, depending on our own interpretation. Even within their own organization, there's disagreement on their goals. Deacon surmises their outlook, stating that, We're not about saving the world. Too big a job for too few. But we're trying to make it a better one. One synth at a time. And care about the little guys. Maybe lend a hand on the side. Not as much as some would like, but hey, it's something. All in all, I think part of my vendetta against the Railroad is that they were the faction I joined up with in my first playthrough of Fallout 4. I pretty much always play idealistic characters in RPGs and having interacted with all the groups, I felt that they had the most noblest cause. I didn't like seeing Synths enslaved or mistreated out in the wasteland and strove to change that. Along the way, as we pissed off the other main powers, I thought to myself, all right, this is it, I'm with them forever. The Railroad has to be the best answer for the Commonwealth. I fought alongside a seeming army of railroad heavies at the Battle of Bunker Hill and thought, okay, the railroad must have the manpower to project their will and protect their interests. And then we infiltrated the Institute to liberate the synths, and then once we left, we blew it up. And then that was it. The Commonwealth was still in ruins, the Institute a smoking crater, and the Brotherhood a crash wreck. I went back to the railroad HQ thinking that there must be some next step, and now that we fulfilled their mission to save the synths, maybe we might be changing tactics. Maybe we launch crusades to save wastelanders or liberate slaves. Instead, we gathered around the body of Liam Bennett, the Institute Mole who made the whole operation happen, who Desdemona privately tells us took his own life due to our actions. It was entirely bittersweet, just almost without the sweetness. The Railroad's one goal had been accomplished, yet all the problems of the Commonwealth remained more or less intact. Sure, the Brotherhood or the Institute could no longer project their own version of rule across the wasteland, but instead, there was just nothingness. No real plan to tackle the chaotic wasteland. No effort to improve the lives of the residents scattered across it. No plan for the future. If anything, the only reason to side with them is to obtain the Deliverer, which may be the best weapon in the game. And this is basically just so you can pretend you're playing an even better game, Nintendo 64's GoldenEye. 